Righteous Detective, where we investigate the lives and art of the great artists. I am Rembrandt, your host. I am the Dutch master from the 1600s, known for my portraits, use of expressions, and use of light. But really, we are not here to talk about me today. Let's travel back in time to the 1200s, where artists were just beginning to be known outside of the church. Today, we will meet Jato de Bondon, who lived from 1266 to 1337, and he is known for being the starting point of Italian Renaissance art. Ciao! Good morning, children. My name is Jato de Bondon. Can you say it after me? Jato de Bondon. Jato de Bondon. Very good. Buena. But now that you can pronounce my name, you can just call me Jato. For most people only call me by my first name. Say it again. Jato. Jato. That is just like me. My name is Rembrandt van Rijn, but people just call me Rembrandt. Oh, sorry, today was not supposed to be about me. Let me tell you my story. I was born near Firenze, Italia, but I guess you say Florence, Italy. Florence was known as a fine city for art soon after I lived. But after Rome fell in 476 AD, the Roman Republic became the Roman Empire when Augustus was crowned emperor in 27 BC. This was followed by the Pax Romana. In AD 286, the empire divided into the Western and Eastern empires until Germanic barbarians defeated the Western Empire in AD 476. Yes, so Rome fell to barbarians in 476 AD, and they destroyed all of the art of the Roman Empire. It took a while for art to come back into style. It mostly came through the Catholic Church, and in paintings and mosaics, that is, pictures made of cut glass, which were used to teach religious stories. But the church had strict rules about paintings. They didn't even look real, because the people looked flat, they lacked emotion or movement, and they lacked perspective. As I grew up, I helped my father by watching his sheep, and I passed by time by drawing pictures of things like flowers and trees, mountains and animals. Eventually, I had an opportunity to be an apprentice to a great painter named Chimabu. You know him, I'm sure? No? Well, I assisted him with imported artistic works in a number of Italiano cities. Soon I began to be known for my own artistic style. People were amazed at the realism of my work. People actually had expressions like joy, anger, surprise, and sadness. So they looked like real alive people. I like to make people with interesting expressions too. I added depth to my scenes and backgrounds, like buildings, forts, and the mountains also. Oh dear chap, I, Thomas Gainsborough, also like painting landscapes in the 1700s in England. Soon I became a master artist with a workshop and assistants. I painted many fantastical frescoes, that is painting on wet plaster, in the church of St. Francis of Assisi in Assisi, Italy. You know, St. Francis of Assisi? And also in Padua, Italy. And later again in Florence. 
In fact, I traveled around Italy painting. I, Fra Angelico, also painted people who look real, have dimensions and emotional expression. I painted many frescoes and religious scenes in the 1400s after your influence, Giotto. I even like to add gold leaf to my paintings. I also created some very fine architectural structures, such as the bell tower in Florence, known as Giotto's Campanile, or bell tower. I understand that my work was the starting point for Italian Renaissance art, and many amazing artists followed me in Italia and Europe, whom I influenced, such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Cezanne, and Picasso. I don't know them, though. Do you? You have not heard of me, Michelangelo Bonarotti, the greatest artist of all time? Oh, well. I guess you did live almost 200 years before me. Well, I'm so famous that I, like you, only go by one name. Michelangelo! Yes, you did influence me. I painted frescoes too, like my many fantastical Bible scenes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. I also liked making people look realistic. And I experimented with architecture myself. I, Pablo Picasso, also studied the great artists. And though I could paint realistically, I experimented in the 1900s with going back to basic shapes in my cubist and surrealistic styles. My art is much more abstract than yours, Jato. Do you know what I painted with? In my day, there were no art stores to buy paints and brushes. So artists had to make our own paint by grinding minerals, clay, and plants and berries and mixing it with egg yolk and water. I, Grandma Moses, who painted folk art in the 1900s, also started out with sticks and berries for my paint brushes and paints, for I could not afford luxuries like art supplies. Well, let's review about me. Repeat after me, Giotto. Giotto. 1266 to 1337. 1266 to 1337. Italian painter. Italian painter. Realistic people who showed emotion. Realistic people who showed emotion. Used the egg tempera to paint. Used egg tempera to paint. Starting point of Italian Renaissance art. Starting point of Italian Renaissance art. Arrivederci. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us on The Artist Detective. We look forward to seeing you next time when we investigate the art and lives of other great artists like Giotto and me. Remember that Ecclesiastes 3.11 says God has made everything beautiful in its time. Until next time, Rembrandt and the artist detective.